To be able to keep bigger cars on the road, you need higher compression engines. Higher compression engines are more efficient. So if you have a higher compression engine, you get more efficiency, you get obviously better mileage, that actually has um, you know, pollution benefits too. Uh, the problem is high compression engines require a high octane fuel. And uh, right now Americans are used to buying low octane fuels for, for cheaper prices. So you, you something has to come together with engines, engine technology, and fuel in, in the market that would encourage people to buy the, uh, encourage automakers to make higher compression engines. So that's, that's one thing. Yeah. No, I, I mean, and there, there's a lot of discussion going on around this right now. I mean, and, and there's a multi-million dollar, multi-year initiative going on at the Department of Energy on this notion of, of matching the vehicles with the fuels. They call it the co-optimization of, of vehicles and fuels. And they're looking at if you introduce a new fuel to the market, i.e. a high octane fuel, what sort of vehicle technologies would those enable? What sort of benefits could you have? And how does that happen? I think that's the most important thing is a lot of times you have things in government that aren't bringing it down to the practical level and the actual implementation. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that that's a huge piece of this initiative from the Department of Energy, I think, is, is very powerful. And I, I really hope that we, you know, um, as, as a nation can benefit from that in these CAFE standards and really accounting for that in a meaningful way. and, and introducing um, action or spurring action to actually get the fuels you need to be able to introduce those technologies.